time to raise our hands up to our overcomer. He alone is the overcomer of all adversity. Uh, the living victory that lives within each of us who will end up being victorious by letting his unconditional love flow through us onto a troubled world of other people that are the same as us. And so it's time to realize that victory belongs unto all those that believe it and most uh, that believe in it most and believe in it the longest. So believe in it hard, persevere. And as we do, we have to realize that there is no victory without some suffering. There is no pain, no gain. That's the reason why in Genesis 6, 6, the Lord God says it grieved him uh, that he made us. He knew the pain. It was just an aspect. But did, uh, there was nothing about the root Hebrew word that ever even remotely implied that he was sorry that he made us because he didn't know the future. He knew what he was getting into. And he made beings that would love him and choose to love him uh, by being loving people. Because if we can't love those whom we can see, uh, we can never love those who we cannot, like an invisible God. So know that if you believe in yourself and have dedication and pride and never quit, you will then be a winner. Uh, and uh, the price of victory is high, but so are the rewards because victory belongs to the most uh, patient and the most persevering. It's the old... Uh, tortoise versus the hare and in the end the the tortoise won because the hare was too cocky and was too sure of himself so praise the lord that we can finally come to the place in time where we can lift up our lord of love for all people because for all people that want to be winners he alone is uh, the roaring lion of Zion who's roaring louder than ever before, that he is now the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. And that uh, lamb-hearted lion and that lion-hearted lamb, uh, he is roaring uh, as soft as a, a kitten's purr for those who really know him because they don't have to hear a roar for that. And so know that when the victory of success is half won, that is when one can gain the habit of work. But the bottom line, no matter how you slice or dice it, there is absolutely no easy way to victory. It's hard, hard work. And the highest values in life must be fought for and won. And for that reason, we need to understand that victory has always been sweetest uh, when, you've, when you've known defeat. Uh, so don't, uh, as we go two steps forward, one step back, know that there's a great purpose for all of us. And know that victory quotes that will motivate you to win is the living word of God. For he says unto all people, I am your God. You are my people. Jeremiah 31. And he says, I have written my law and my love upon your hearts. And beyond that, no more will anyone even need to be taught of me in this age of the um, lion and the lamb with the revelation of the Lord's love uh, coming from this latter day mountain of Isaiah 25. For the Lord has promised that upon this latter day mountain he would remove his shame, all of our shame and guilt, as he says unto one and all, I am your God and I will never remember your sinfulness. He's throwing it all into the crystal uh, sapphire sea in heaven. Uh, that is his sea of the forgetfulness of his memory. So know that victory belongs unto those who will claim it. And it's time to get along with that program. And so I welcome you and I thank you immensely for coming. And as we do, know that it's time to get, get new understandings of old, um, twisted understandings. We've seen through a glass darkly far too long, people. 
And the answers are all clearly visible if you know what you're looking for, if you have been quickened by the Spirit. The Lord called me 30 years ago and a prophet laid hands on me. I began seeing open-eyed visions and I haven't stopped praising the Lord since. I cannot. So all I know, it's time to raise your hand like Rocky and because the knockout punch has already happened. Uh, because the Lord is saying to one and all of us, I will forgive your iniquity. He who was the accuser of the brethren had to be removed because day and night he was uh, going before the Lord telling him all about our sin. And so Daniel 12, 1 is fully manifested. And uh, watch my other videos if you want depth. But one thing is for sure, whether you believe or not, it's time to agree to disagree with people that are working their tail off, uh, promoting love, hope, and faith in this world through Christ Jesus, who is love. And no one likes that. People, uh, all you accidental uh, people coming to this channel who aren't religious, when you hear me pleading again and again for a world to like the Word of God and none of them don't, what does that tell you? All the religion is obsolete because I come forth with the unconditional love of God as it really is, not as it has been taught to be uh, by the uh, backwards religion of man. Uh, so it's time to realize the truest truth. God is not a respecter of man. He has no favorites. And uh, if, if, if that were true, if he did only love the Christians and only they get to go to heaven, everybody else goes to hell. If that were true, then we would be a loser because we would have a false God. He would love them more than us. I used to be a Christian. I would never say I'm that again. They have the right Lord. They have much right. But all the salvation stuff is a bunch of load of crap. No one in Christianity believes that those who love are born of God and know God because he is love. That means everyone who loves is born of God if they have not committed the unforgivable sin of letting their love light wax right cold. So leave the land of the walking dead where you become just a, uh, uh, have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Our love started off as a noun, uh, as a verb, and then it became a noun if we let it go out, and then we are lost without him. There is no good thing about this guy, and there's no good thing about none of you. There is no good person on this world, and never has been except for Emmanuel coming back upon the wind of his blessedness. But know that he is love living within me. And because he is love, if I, my love is alive, as I'm walking with the Spirit, there is no condemnation. So get ready and time to hear that trumpet blow. And as it does, know that the seventh trumpet has sounded first, and the first is last, and the last is first. And when that happened, when the covenant was first given, Israel inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3, because it was written correctly to Israel and all mankind. And then, and then, and then there's always a then. And then they received the new name, Chrislam, uh, Isaiah 62, 2. God promised an appointed new name that he would send through his true Elijah task uh, servant, of the latter days, his end time revelator of uh, Isaiah 28, who is busy trying to tear down stuff. Uh, that is the prediction. Line by line, precept by precept, would the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm, pulling down distortion alleys, raising up clarity so that all might stand there uh, and shine as the sun as it predicted in the last days in Daniel 12, 1, in the days of the latter day Daniel, who embraces his destiny uh, as Elijah, Daniel 12, 13. And so in this hour, it's time to get revved up, get ready for victory, get ready to be an overcomer. 
and know that in these days of the foretold great restoration of Acts 3.21, know well that this end-time prophecy therein, it says that this great global event must happen across the circle of the earth, or it stresses in no uncertain terms that Emmanuel, Christ the Lord, and that event could not even return if this message is ignored and if it is valid. So be careful who you ignore and what you ignore because all things shall be destroyed. No birds, no fish, no mankind left upon this planet, uh, Zephaniah 1, 1. But the Lord is saying, if you people will just start being kind, start liking the guy's videos, if you want this message to get out there to create love in a loveless world. And if you don't, you're an asshole. <laughs> Excuse me. But one thing is for sure, it's time that uh, the blessed are those who will let their love move and groove so that they want to share uh, good news with others. So blessed are all those that will let their embers of love burn one more time as a supernova into heaven as they become reignited like the phoenix. But everyone should also try to see that sometimes love can be confusing, especially when we try to loving others we don't agree with. And for that reason, all loving souls of our living word of God Almighty needs to always agree to disagree uh, without arguments. And that is the key. There's no reason to argue. Uh, and so in this time, know that there are 2,153 billionaires uh, on earth. 2,153 billionaires. And that's not even to mention uh, m more than 40 million millionaires that hold most of the planet's wealth. 40 million millionaires. This world has no money problem. It has a love problem. And that is why revelation has been given in Isaiah 60 and 61 that money from all over this globe, from awakening people of loving hearts, will come and this world is going to get fixed up. Uh, it's going to be a world with penal colonies, no more prisons. It's going to be a world of the future now. And so in this time, know that uh, it's time to realize that God's purpose for this age is to call out people for his name. That is what Billy Graham said. That's what God is doing, whether they come from the Muslim world, the Buddhist world, the Christian world, or the non-believing world. They are members of the body of Christ because they called him, uh, because he called them. They might not even know the name of Jesus, but they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have. Then Billy Graham said, then they turn to the only light they have. And I think they are saved and are going to be with us in heaven. People, I know that they're going to be with us in heaven. For God says, I love you. And uh, that will be all that we need is his love. And so in this hour, it's time to raise up uh, the good news across the circle of the earth uh, so that all people can begin the great celebration because all of creation has been groaning with great expectation for the revelation of who we even are. And I tell you, we are angels in the flesh or we are demons in the flesh. It's all our, uh, our choice. And... Um, but the Bible says that the glory of the latter house of the Lord shall be greater than that of the former. Uh, first he made uh, the early house was the angels, and then he made the uh, us. And because we are last, so too are we to be first. And so I praise the Lord now and forever that he is bringing clarity where there has been none. He is bringing tearing down the mountains, lifting up the valleys. And as he does that, it's time to... Uh, oh, I got on the wrong station. <laughs> but one thing for sure, uh, nothing like live, live uh, transmissions here. But one thing is for sure, the Lord is the beloved, the blessed, and the adored. He is our all in all, and he is our living charity. 
uh, and the benevolence of his beneficence and the magnificence thereof goes forth and his glory shall cover the earth as waters covering the sea as grass covering the land and even as sand covering the most desolate of the deserts and in this hour it's time to realize that there are some very uh, beautiful things ahead. Eye has not seen nor ear has heard the glorious things that are ahead. And so everyone should also now try to see that sometimes love can be confusing, especially when we try loving others that we don't agree with. And for that reason, all loving souls of our living word of God Almighty, we all need to agree to disagree with others so that arguments don't have to happen um, so that we can begin walking in the Lord's most peaceful ways which shall soon take us to a whole brand new world of next to no more terrorism thank the Lord whose mercy shall indeed endure forever and so most blessed are the Lord's faithful few uh, who are daring to let their most loving faith loose like a fast spreading wildfire burning as it flies as they run quickly with it. This vision was written for the appointed time at the end and written plainly on the tablet so all those who readeth it may run. Run fast before the fire burns your ass. <laughs> we can fall on the rock or the rock can fall on us. And so most blessed then are all the Lord's faithful few daring to let their most loving faith loose. Uh, and then within the spirit of abundant kingdom age hopes, let all people born of love now return to the innocence of, of being like little children again in their hearts. And let such wise souls, shining as the most radiant sun of overflowing smart, uh, prudence. Let them then behold uh, kingdom age wisdom of love all aflame, all aflame with our good shepherd's most fervent passion coming through Christ's most blessed healing power. And for it has finally come to pass in this hour, in these end time days, that our roaring lion of Zion is fine, finally pouring out his most blissful spirit of peace to those yielding unto it over all flesh uh, to pierce all the chaos so both the stupid and the smart both can finally see that blinded eyes of our closed minds can only let us see what our hearts wants us to feel whether that's good or bad, right or wrong, loving or unloving, for there is absolutely no darkness but ignorance of love alone. And as Daniel 12, 9 foretold, the kingdom age word of the Lord has reopened. It had to for his message of Malachi 3, 1, which is his kingdom age covenant message to all mankind so this world will not end up being destroyed if anybody will believe uh, the truth. And so it's time, and as the world, and as the Lord's most amazing kingdom age word uh, of uh, our Prince of Peace's love came forth unto myself, I, Daniel uh, of Windsor, Ontario, Canada, the one predicted from the north in Isaiah 41. It is predicted that I, I, Elijah would be from the north, and I'm from Canada if that counts. Uh, but as the word of the Lord disclosed upon me, it, it held the divine fire of opals ablaze. It was like a shining star of sapphires all aglow. And it was crystal clear that the blessedness of such an amazing word of love was originally spoken long before anything else was ever made by he whose living word is always overflowing life. Uh, and abundant thereof, and love's very best flowing passion of the fervency of uh, no hypocrisy, just total love. And so love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace unto all mankind in these days of Elijah that's introducing Chrislam, uh, Isaiah 62 to Israel's brand new name, because the kingdom age covenant of God was written correctly to Israel and all mankind, and now they have inherited all.
all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. These are the days for the shattering of the power of the holy people because God's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. In the days of Satan being removed, Daniel 12, 1, because he would have made God into a liar, that accuser of the brethren day and night before the Lord. There's no way God could actually say, I will forgive all your iniquity and never remember it if Satan is there, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> watching Seinfeld too much. But one thing's for sure, it is, I can't even see, I'm getting all fogged up. It is time to realize more than ever that uh, the most amazing word of our king of love, uh, when it came forth unto me, uh, the voice of his most precious excellence then clearly said this, he said, always forgiven are all those believing the gospel truth that the Lord God gives unto all of us according to the measure of our hearts. If, if we're only as shallow as a glass of water with our love, then uh, the depths of his bottomless ocean of his adoration can never fill us up. And so know that this is, uh, for this is how God really so loved the world, that he gave his only uh, begotten son, his beloved love of the ages, who is love. That is the name that John gave him in 1 John 4, 7. And those who love are born of him. Uh, and so know that he is love undefiled, so that everyone believing in love will not perish, but have eternal life. And for that reason, the Kingdom Age New Covenant chapter of Jeremiah 31 straight out declares that his love is an everlasting love for all people, not letting their very own love light wax totally cold. That is the unforgivable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Jesus clearly said all sin would be forgiven uh, mankind, all blasphemies, even blasphemy against him. But uh, the Holy Spirit is love living within us. And if that happens, they would be tossed into love's blackest outer uh, gross darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth, uh, nor is believing anything whatsoever some kind of free get out of jail card. It's never had anything to do with. Many are going to say, Lord, Lord, I believed I did this, I did this, I had the gift of miracles, I did this, I believed. And he's going to say, Get away, I don't, I never knew you. You let your love light go right out. What if it's true? It is. So blessed are the wise understanding that when we love unconditionally and when we receive unconditional love, we very suddenly discover that there's an overflowing great power in such feelings of love's very best kindness uh, and action. And it's always a verb. It's always moving. And then we instantly find new uh, love-based hope ahead of us as we become divinely empowered enough to find new courage sent from our living victory and overcomer of all adversity. Uh, so let your love become un un restrained and then let such loving souls uh, then they shall see some brand new things born of love divine as they begin receiving some most wondrous things that they never expected to come about and come forth to them without any expectations that's how love works as soon as you have rules and expectations you nullify love love cannot even move um, Love is always unconditional, and any time anyone thinks that it, it, it is not, uh, then they are just lying to themselves. So as it is written, know that love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not proud, it does, it does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. And so why is this world to keep ostracizing the one who's preaching the most passionate word of love. Think about it. That is insane in this loveless world to hide this great bonfire. <sighs> love does not delight in the evil of ignorance that, that all my brothers and sisters are forcing upon me. Uh, but uh, love rejoices in the truth that sometime their eyes are going to open up and if they don't, they're going to die hard. Don't do it. Don't do it. It 
Love always protects, always trusts, always hope, always perseveres, but also be forewarned that when any of us love unconditionally, it also means that we even have to choose to love people during the tough times, during the diseases, during the accidents, uh, as well as the good times. And such a uh, valid kind of love, which is the only kind of love, as soon as uh, we have unconditional love, we're divorced. <laughs> A marriage can't last without unconditional love. And so such valid kind of love as unconditional love, which is the only kind that there is, uh, that means that we also need to be loving unto others, even if they act rude or inconsiderate. Therefore, it also means that we must unconditionally even love our enemies. Uh, and if I'm a false prophet, people need to start loving on me. And this means that unconditional love really takes a whole lot of work. I've got an uphill job at this channel, and it's so, uh, people are so ungrateful, so unthankful that God has touched a man such as me that would give such lovely messages, boosting morale of people uh, who's almost given up all hope. So it's time for all wise people to start doing the, the baby step thing. Since nobody uh, is ever really liking anything that I've ever produced uh, at this channel, it's time for people to unselfishly begin liking this channel for the benefit of others. Stop being selfish. Don't you think that other people might get something out of these messages of unconditional love? Everybody wants unconditional love, but no one wants to give it. How about having some unconditional love for a hard-working guy that only wants to glorify the risen Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the earth? I challenge all you people who have never liked me once, start liking or get the flub. Uh, get into Morg official slime. He'd love to have you. He's the new Hyperion guy that's got the 666 on his wall, the Antichrist wannabe guy. But one thing is for sure, if you really want to know what the Bible says about unconditional love, please understand that his unconditional love is found all throughout the Bible. And even though we are commanded to repent over our sins and strive towards the the holy ways of God, even though we might not do that along the journey, he never stops loving any of us. Uh, and uh, even even if we turn hatefully uh, towards him uh, and start spitting at him, he still loves us simply because they allow uh, people, allow their shame and their guilt to make them toxic people. So come to this mountain, receive now that which the Lord has promised in Isaiah 20. 25. He wants to remove all shame and guilt from off all people by his love's forgiveness. Won't you accept that, please? It'll, it'll, it'll lay your, it's time to lay your burdens down at the cross. Uh, and so it's time that we need to become uh, not uh, better, but we need to become bitter as the Holy Spirit dove of love comes forth as the most regal eagle of the eons to, to uh, flash his whitest wings at us. Um, so know that it is love's forgiveness alone that could possibly bring forth uh, anything good in this world. And so it's time to move and groove and slip and slide. And as I close uh, on unforgivable, un unconditional love. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5, you have heard people say, love your enemies or love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you to love your enemies and pray for anyone who mistreats you. Then you will be acting like your father in heaven. So right there, uh, God loves bad people. And we are bad people. There is no good one. All the world just needs to realize that there was nothing good about Muhammad or John or Peter or Paul or none of them or the Pope. Nothing good about him either. There's nothing good about anybody that's ever lived aside from Emmanuel. What is good is Christ living in us. He is love and all those who love, choose to love, are born of him and know him because he is love. That is the religion of Chrislam.